Hello everyone, today we're going to be checking out the monoliths. However, what I recommend you get before that is the Indian Diving Mask. To get the recipe for this item, you have to go to the Puma region, to Iron Island. And right here where this goat is, you see this interesting site near the tree? That is where you can find the recipe for this item. However, that means you need to have an excellent Tanner workbench because we need a ray skin, so you need to kill electric rays. So also make a harpoon so you can actually fight underwater. Alright, let's upgrade this bad boy. Alright, so let's check it out. To make a piece of raised leather, we need to have a processed version of it. Well, a dried version. Luckily, I have the regular one that you get from skinning the rays. And now all we need to do is hang it on the drying rack. And yikes, that takes 20 hours. And that is with all the bonuses I have as well. That's kind of crazy. Alright, it's the next day. The skin is ready. Which means we can pop it in here. And with the water we've put into the water tank. As well as a piece of bark that we need to get real quick. We can now make ray letter. Now the rest is pretty self-explanatory. We need a tendon and two leaves. Then on the improved workbench, we can make the Indian diving mask. I don't know where this whole ceramic pattern came from. I mean, you can tell me it's the leaves, but last time I checked, that shouldn't be the case. When we equip this diving mask, we can basically see quadruple the time underwater, which is really going to help out because, well, we're going to a place called the Underwater Temple. Right, we have arrived at the underwater temple. Let's put on our diving mask. Let's hop into the water. So all we need to find, pretty sure are just these, right? These monoliths. This looks pretty red to me. So that's arches. All right, those are noted down. Now let's see where the others at. Oh, I can see one over there. I guess they just circle this. Probably in like a... Oh, wait a second. Oh no, this is blue. Okay, <laughs> that's good. It's really sunny. Eh? And then that seems to be a triangle with circles. I'm not sure if this is the same for everyone. I kind of doubt it. But let's get up to the surface real quick, because we are running out of stamina. Alright, so all we have to do with this information is you see this giant rock. Well, we have to go down into the water here. I think we can just make a jump. Oh, that was a bad idea. Well, at least... Ouch. Okay, well... Uh, anyway, if you go down here, there's actually an entrance. Now, by the looks of it, you can really easily do this without the mask, but I found the mask being pretty helpful, because we can do everything at once. So, let's see. The red one was that one. So, I'm guessing we just pull the lever. we okay, pull that a couple times. This is green. Green was the triangle with circles. And then blue, swirly sun. Which would be that one. Something opened up. I'm guessing, yeah, these gates opened up. So what is all around here? A dead man. Jacobs. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the uh, last name, but this is probably going to trigger a cutscene. Yep, it is. The travelers found ancient wall carvings in the underwater temple. The symbols and drawings helped help them decipher the map that Chief Guy Bana had given, given to Ponce de Leon. The commander and the geographer rejoiced. They could see how to navigate through the Beamini Belt, open the sea gate to Beamini Bay, and reach the Fountain of Youth. But they were not destined to leave this place. From the shadows of the temple, the travelers were attacked by a mysterious killer. Geographer Jacob de Liasso died here. The fate of Ponce de Leon is unknown. Perhaps the undercurrents carried away his corpse. The killer took the map and became the only person who knew the safe route to Bimini. He headed to the San Cristobal, the only place he could go from here. My God, what is he going to do with the crew? I well, don't know how this... Uh diary entry would make sense if he wrote it after he got murdered, but hey. So it seems like our mysterious killer is still on the loose. Now we already knew that he was part of the crew, because one of the other crewmates we found his dead body and he was writing in a journal. Another native map piece. Dried hide. There is something under here. What is this? Copper ingots. I mean, it's something, I suppose. Another dried hide. You know, the dried hides are actually pretty good, because we do kind of need them, and I keep forgetting to dry a couple of them in advance but i think also according to the map that is pretty much everything we can find around here 
I will admit, I was kind of expecting a bit more. Like a bit more of a puzzle-orientated dungeon or something. But it was just uh, one thing. Alright. Wait, we can upgrade the Spanish Schooner again? I thought we already had the best version, but I guess not. Well, we'll have to check that out when we get back home, I suppose. Also, the heart with the pot now has a water tank to it. Which is quite nice, because I wanted to have that in there. Our main objective is gone at this moment, but we can go to Foggy Island, which, funny enough, is the only thing not marked on the map, like, of a place where we have to go, because that is Craggy Island. And also, this obsidian thing can kind of get the heck out of here, and we track the Foggy Island. Because Foggy Island is going to be our next destination. We already have a bunch of land uncovered. The reason why is because when we were uncovering Iron Island, we stood pretty high up on the top, somewhere in the back here, and it uncovered just a lot of craggy as well as foggy island. So that is kind of great. There actually seems to be a underwater chest. I took off the diving mask, and maybe I should put it back on. A copper knife. Well, I mean, it's something at the very least. I don't see anything else around here. All right. All right, there should be another sunken ship. Yep. This one is actually protected by some electric rays. And there is the chest. A medical kit. That actually isn't too bad, I will admit. I hear... Fighting noises. Oh shit. That was a bat. I actually didn't know you could uh, toss those away. That's actually pretty good to know. Ouch. Oh shit, I actually tossed my spear. That's not good. Oh, there's a lot of stuff around here. Where's my spear, though? I think it's all the way back here. I think I tossed it, like, really far out. Yeah. Alright, good, I have it. There's actually, like, treasures all around. It's kind of crazy. And, well, there it is. A seaman's dagger. Also, I'd like to point out that we can actually make a saber now. This is something that they added during this update. To actually give a use, I suppose, to the saber blade. So we might actually make the saber. Because I'm pretty sure the saber is going to be stronger than the spear. Iron spear does 40 a hit. And the saber deals 100. So, yeah, you know, there's a... I suppose clear difference. It does, however, cost some of these sets of tools, which is a very limited resource, usually only got at shipwrecks. There should still be one on this island, because according to the map, there is one in the region, and I already explored the other shipwreck. There's be some plank... Oh, man. What's this? A cookbook. Nice. Oh, come on. I tried to stab him because he was sleeping, but I guess that didn't work. What is this? Just a place for some living water? That's actually pretty good, because, well, let me tell you, we actually kind of needed that. I will admit we're also on a completely different part of the island than I thought we were. So besides just a bunch of scrap piles, it doesn't seem like there is much around here. Oh, actually. Oh, that's just a French log, okay. I thought it was just a... Oh, I thought it was a book for skills. And an obsidian deposit. I guess that is pretty good. Because didn't we need that? You'll be able to mine it if you make a pickaxe. I already know that, though, game. So, I mean, do we have a pickaxe? Like, with us? I guess while we're here. A Dutch ship's diary. Nothing is in Dutch, it's all in English. What the heck? Oh, they do use very Dutch names, I suppose. I'll allow it, game. I will allow it. Alright, we do have a pickaxe. Pretty good. Alright, we just mine one piece. Alright, well, there we go. We got that completed. Nice. What the hell is this? I can put it in my pocket. We got two new blueprints from that as well. Well, that looks like one to me, though, game. But alright. Oh, I found a Viking tablet. You know, without this hunter's vision, I would have never seen that. Oh, come on. I was reading a Viking tablet bat. I found a Portuguese ship log. Like, every goddamn country in the world has crash-landed here or something. Well, what is that? Is that a wolf? You're gonna go on my wall. Oh, it's a white jackal. Well, he didn't even drop the, uh, trophy, but this guy did. Nice. So what is up with this tree, then? So there's just people hanging from it. And there's the Puma logo. Who was this? A cutscene. All right. This island can horrify even the most experienced sailor. Our historian, Jose de Ruiz, had to investigate the fogs and shipwrecks here. I don't know what happened to the, to the scientist, but his remains are now hanging from this tree. It doesn't look like the work of the same killer. 
Because that ain't unsettling. You completed the story on the Puma region. There's still stuff on Craggy Island, though, isn't there? Alright, well, I guess we completed that. Alright, let's see what he has. The diary. As well as the compass. Does it give us anything? Because now some of these items actually have some sort of special effect on them. And this one, yes, mapping range boosted by 25%. So it's quite interesting to hear that this is not the same killer. I guess that would make sense, because this guy already turned into a full-on skeleton. Although I guess some of the other crewmates did as well. I mean, we have been here for like 150 days or something. And oh, nice, there's a Puma potion near the tree base as well. The killer's diary, Oh. Alright, interesting. So, there was someone out for this guy already, but he got killed before she was able to kill him. So potentially, that means we're dealing with even more killers than we already fought. Again, I don't think this is the... God damn it. I don't think this is the same person that is part of our crew, because it sounds like he doesn't have a reason anymore to, well, kill, basically. But then again, you know, you never know. Alright, we're making some height, which is going to be good. Because it hopefully means we can actually map out quite a decent part here. There seems to be a native map piece here as well. Well, currently, from what we can see, there seems to be everything there is. Alright, I think this is as high as we can go. Nice, and the map in radius is doubled as well. And now that we can see that there is a sunken treasure chest, like, right next to where we were. And we can also see the other islands. Fantastic. So this is basically everything there is in the area. Just a treasure chest left. Oh, this is where the set of tools is. Wait, what? That is so odd. And the thing I'm talking about, by the way, is that it's an actual item. Usually special resources are shown down here, but this one isn't. So we've gotten everything off this island. That is pretty good. It means our next and final destination is going to be this, Craggy Island. But we'll do that next time, of course, because there's something else I want to do right now. Can read this cookbook real quick. Alright, cooked food does not cause food poisoning. Alright, that's good. Alright, well, anyway, what I wanted to check out is what the ships turn into if we upgrade it once more. So we need long sticks and small sticks for it. Well, annoyingly enough, it did not use this one. That is really uh, kind of annoying. But anyway, we now have the Great Spanish Schooner. And this does seem to be the last upgrade to it. Oh my goodness, it added an extra box to it? That's a full 300 extra storage. Oh, and we can fish from here as well. Is that- that's another log holder as well? Man, Great Spanish Schooner is fantastic. While we're at it, let's actually create that saber. So all we need is the saber blade, which is created with two iron ingots. I'm gonna assume it's at the forge, though. And look at that, I am right. Turn that on. Create that. All right now we should be able to create the saber. And there we go, the new strongest tool in the game. Outshining the spear. You know, I kind of want to test out the saber real quick compared to the Iron Spear. There are a couple boars around, so let's see how many hits this will take. Toss them off to the side. Oh my goodness, that was two hits. Those weren't even crits either. That was just two hits. All right, let's check out the Spear then, in comparison. Also something to note, the durability is a lot higher by a full 60 hits. All right, there's another boar. Toss them off to the side. One, two. Oh, well, there we go, that's already two hits. And he's still alive. And he's uh, kind of running for it. Alright, three, four. That's all it took. But you know, that's really good to know. This saber gives me a lot of confidence for the Great Jackal fight. And since Crocky Island is the only place left to go, really, that means next episode, we're gonna do the Great Jackal fight. So I'm really excited for it. Alright, with that said, I'm gonna be leaving it off over here. Pretty excited for next episode. Really wanna see what this boss fight's all about. Because apparently, from what I heard, it's gonna be pretty tough. So, we're definitely gonna have to prepare for it quite a bit. I'm gonna be doing a couple things off camera to get ready for it. So I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone.